So this is probably going to be my last video uh, on the subject. I, uh, I, should, I should probably emphasize uh, once more that I do all of these series without any planning. I don't use notes, even if my eyes move between my monitors. It's because I'm trying to just ensure it's actually recording okay. Uh, I've had some problems with the audio, I think in part like three or four. Um, and as I went along and, and actually thought about the next uh, part, what to do, and uh, without actually planning my warnings or anything like that, um, it occurred to me that I shouldn't even mention things like the uh, uh, the mono situation, the, what actually happened between 2006 and 2010, uh, because each one of those subjects is going to take quite a long time to go through. Uh, and they would detract from the overall video. So if, if we're talking about Novella as a company, there is Novella as an entity, uh, and not very much has happened as the uh, ownership of the company, things like that, between the years of 2000 and uh, actually with Susan, nothing much has happened since it was acquired by Novell and then was affected by the influence of Microsoft. Uh, so what I, I did try and cover was the acquisition of the company, the run up towards that, you know, Novell actually being one of the major uh, distributors and one of the main kind of targets for Microsoft, I suppose, because of that, uh, and the decline of Novell, which ended up, even in the eyes of Brocklow, which was supportive of Novell because of the case uh, against uh, against Co over, Lean, over Unix, uh, was, you know, even, even Brocklow was basically accusing Novell of being a, uh, a betrayer of the community. So. I suppose in some future series I could go into the details and the smaller, finer things inside Novell and what it did over the years and why these are in fact favors to Microsoft and not really a, uh, in any way a contribution from Novell, contrary to the, uh, the public relations.